Hey guys, this is True Slice Concessions, and today we'll be talking about how to disassemble the main door and everything behind it of your C-Sub 1 2. This is basically how to disassemble and reassemble the entire system. We have another video on doing the, the pumps, so um, you can check that out after you're done with this, all right? So, we have here is a C-Sub 1 2. It's very similar to the Taylor C-Sub 1 3, okay? So, most people have the regular black knobs, but in this case, we do have like a special setup that was requested by a specific customer. So we have locking pins, all right? Not too bad, but it's a very similar idea. So let's get this thing disassembled. All right, so first with the pins, you have to unscrew the top to allow this locking part to come off and you're gonna drop the, the locking pin through, all right? The reason we have these is because we've seen sometimes that you know vibrations can cause these head bolts to come loose. So what the pin does is it locks it in place and doesn't allow any movement so when the system's under pressure, nothing will burst out, all right? And uh, it's never fun. You come in with a bunch of ice cream on the floor and all over your machine. So let's take this off first. Slide through the bottom. Make sure to put this back on so you don't lose it. All right, everything from here on will be pretty standard, but we're gonna show you how to do it anyway. All right, so first you're gonna take off all your head bolts. Oh, a little tight. There we go. They need a rag. There we go, get some pork on that. I'm gonna remove everything. You're gonna go ahead and pull off the door, all right? So this door assembly is pretty much a standard Crown Series C712, C713 door, okay? We're gonna do the same deal. The, the slight differences with the pump machine is your, your plastic guys are gonna be a little thinner. As you see, it's uh, physically fitting into a different auger or beater assembly, okay? So the pump style assemblies always have these guides and different style blades. You're gonna see that in a minute. So these come off first. Same deal, you're gonna remove all your O-rings your door seals, we're gonna remove your door handle pin. So that comes out, you go ahead and pull everything out. Like that. Pull out your bleeder tubes. And uh, pretty much that's the whole thing. Uh, and also you could uh, take up your uh, star shaped nozzles. And now you have the whole door. So you would uh, take this assembly, you go and take it to the sink and wash it, do whatever you gotta do to get this ready. Same deal. You're gonna need lube and your gasket remover, okay? So basically, when you have everything apart like this, you're gonna start using this tool to remove all the O-rings, okay? This would be where you would inspect to make sure everything's still rounded and not flattened out, because in a pressurized machine, you wanna make sure your seals are good, because uh, if they're not, the pressure's gonna force the liquid through, or your product through, and you get a lot of leakage, okay? So this is basically the entire disassembly of your door, okay? The next thing that's gonna come out is gonna be your auger assembly. All right, so this might look a little different from what we're used to for a C713 or 794. Very similar, but also very different. For the pump machines, what they have are actually two separate scraper blades, like these. And um, you got these plastic, um, I guess, guides that fit onto it. So basically, when you have it, you're gonna see this forms like a nice flush seal so that there won't be any play. But you know, if I take these off, Gonna see, see all that play you have? That's what this prevent, prevents right here, okay? So if this is worn out, or if this is um, not present when you're running the machine, and you forgot that you hit wash or you're doing anything with the machine, you're gonna hear a lot of click, 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 because this is physically going like that in there because there's nothing stabilizing it, okay? So make sure you pull all that stuff out.
we go. And the last part you're gonna pull out is your, is your beater shaft. go and now the whole thing's empty all right so basically we're gonna have all your parts out you're gonna expect to remove all your o-rings you're gonna clean everything you gotta do sanitize it let it air dry and then you're gonna you know right before you use it you're gonna put everything all back together again which means all these o-rings need to be inspected all put back together relubricated and um reassembled properly all right so let's start from back to front in terms of reassembly, okay? So everything we just did to get everything out to clean, now we're gonna show you how to put everything back in. All right, so this is this is pretending we just cleaned everything, all right? So just assume everything is clean, we're gonna run a simulation like this. All right, so we got our beater shaft, the O-ring and the beater shaft seal. So basically if this goes bad, you're gonna have a lot of product coming out the back and it'll leak out through here. So if you see a lot of leakage here, Check this guy, okay? Because uh, probably one of these failed on one of the sides. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna lubricate it. I uh, put someone right in there. Turn it lock. Make sure it's all the way in. All right. We repeat that with the other side. All right. And then now we're gonna move on to the auger assembly, the beater shaft assembly, okay? So not too bad. Make sure, this is the, this is the best time to check your blades to make sure that everything's sharp. Um, it should be pretty much sitting like a notch like that. If you're getting anything duller than that, go ahead and replace your blades. So it fits in with a notch like that and it goes right on the hole. Only fits one way, okay? You can't fit any other way because you're gonna break it, snap it one way in drop that's it that's normal okay then you're gonna take your other blade that in all right i'm gonna start putting this in wait there's more before we put everything back in you want to make sure you have these guides on remember we talked about earlier it's gonna bounce around without them so these guys are really important so the back notches connect right on these right here if you look at that right so that's what this is supposed to do so you would, you're gonna notice that they're actually opposite ends. They're not the same piece, okay? The notches are a little uneven. So that means you have the right set. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna put, let's see, your notch on the bottom here, which should fit all the way in, and the notch is gonna fit on the other one, just like that, just like this, okay? So once you put everything back in the way it's supposed to be, it should sit in pretty flush and not have too much play. There we go, just like that. Okay, so we repeat that with the next part. Turn and lock. All right, see how flush this is? This is where it's supposed to be. If you put everything in and it's, and it's like that and it won't go any further, make sure your drive shaft is all the way in, okay? Because if it's not all the way in, you try to force everything back on, you're gonna break some stuff and that's not fun. So make sure you're always flush and locked like that, okay? Now we're gonna come back down and we're gonna show you how to put the door all back together. So non-pressurized machines usually will have three of these. But with pressurized machines, you may see a center piston that has extra seals, okay? So it would be this order, left, center, right. So as usual, after you inspect and clean everything, make sure you lubricate all your O-rings. And then you repeat for the center. And then your right side. go on to our bleeding tubes okay just remember if you have trouble bleeding or getting a ton of leakage out of it make sure you change these o-rings out okay so lubricate o-rings put them all in repeat with the other side just like 
like that. We're gonna put all our handles back on there. So make sure this is your um, flow adjustment. So the more out of it is like the more it blocks, so you get less flow. If you turn this clockwise in, it actually shortens the distance so you get more flow when you, when you pull down on your handle. Make sure you put in the right notch. There we go. Make sure you have good free movement. All right, I'm gonna repeat that with the center one. Got good movement. Right, our last one. And this might be a little out of spec. So if you ever get a little bend in that, see how this is supposed to be straight like this. If you get a bend like this, it's gonna make it more difficult. But you can use a little trick like this. Usually to bend it back. There we go. So now it's a little more straight. Should fit right in. There we go. Fit right in. Get everything lined up. Lock it. Good movement. Good movement. Good movement. All right. Now the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put the, the door seals on, okay? If they're, if they're not stretchy anymore, or they rip, torn, too dry, too flat, go ahead and replace them, okay? But these, pretty new, you got some good flex on these. Make sure you put the smooth side up and the notch side down because the notches are gonna fit right into here. So what you're gonna do is fit that down. If you have fresh ones and they don't fit all the way, just stretch them like I did earlier. And when you do that, it's gonna help it stretch out to, to uh, go into the indentation that we're supposed to fit. Then you're gonna follow up with these guides. All right, just like that. And what you're gonna do is I like to hold my finger down here to make sure they don't drop. What I'm gonna do is put them in, line up the studs, all right, and then go under. If you push up on the paddles, then make sure this is flat. Okay, if you don't, sometimes the paddles will reach down a little further and it'll catch on the, the edge of your, um, your pistons right here and it won't, it won't tilt all the way in. So make sure that you go like this with your fingers to make sure everything fits flat, okay? Then you're gonna follow in with these. So if you have the regular plastic bolts, you won't have this hole right here, okay? So the, the, you know, the reason for the hole is to make sure they don't vibrate out. So when you put these all together, you make sure that they're all up and down. They're all going to fit. We're going to show you that in a minute, okay? Put corner to corner. And then the rest. All right, so here's where the hole alignment matters, all right? If the holes aren't aligned right, this won't go through and hold it in place to do its job. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just turn everything so it's secure and make sure everything is facing up and down. There we go. So the first side is done. I'm gonna stick this through the bottom, through here, and then we're gonna take the locking nut and just screw it on hand tight there we go just like that good repeat on this side yeah, that. turn that up all right so the holes have to be up and down so again we take the locking piece take the nut off fit it through the bottom through the top, see a little off a little bit, so we're gonna have to pin this guy a little more. Bottom one, there we 
you go. So now it fits through, just like this. Now we're gonna put the nut on here as well. All right, nice and secure. Now I'm gonna put the last two pieces on here, which is our star uh, nozzle pieces. And there we go. So this is the ending of the video of how to disassemble and reassemble everything on your Crown C712 from Taylor. And the next video we're gonna have up to you, uh, with, along with other information, is um, including you know the pumps and how to prime your barrel and uh, all that stuff. So we'll see you on our website, all right? Have a great day.